the most technically advanced commercial airliner in the world today. We heard this same statement not too many years ago when the L-1011 TriStar was introduced. It was true then, and it's true now. Except now, we're talking about the new Boeing 767. The 767 was built to satisfy the need for a fuel-efficient, medium-range, wide-body aircraft. It promises to fill the bill quite handily. Not a bad-looking airplane, is it? But if you want to see something really pretty, how about that? It's not polite to brag, but uh, I've got to tell you, the Boeing mechanics in Seattle say it's the best looking of any airline's 767. Man, that's a good looking airplane. Unfortunately, it takes more than a good looking airplane to fill passenger seats. So what else does the 767 have to offer? A first class cabin just right for our Royal Ambassador service. The 18 passengers in this section will be seated in the latest design sleeper seats, which provide comfort superior to any other seat in use today. An ambassador class cabin that features six across seating in comfortable L-1011 type first class seats. This section truly provides the comfort our business passengers desire and expect. Service will include everything presently provided on our Transcon flights. What about our coach passengers? The seven across seating configuration provides more room than any of our competitors 767s. We're talking about six window or aisle seats per row with only one center seat. This means only 19 center seats in the entire 129 seat coach cabin. We can't brag about features without mentioning storage. Large, and I mean large, overhead storage compartments above the outside seats and the middle seats. A roomy garment bag closet and three coat closets. But that's enough bragging. Let's take a look at some shots we were able to get while the Boeing people were putting the finishing touches on this airplane. The 767 has four main cabin doors. The two located at either end of the right side are considered servicing doors, and both are two inches shorter than the corresponding doors on the left side of the aircraft. One emergency exit is located over each wing. The forward container compartment door is located approximately 13 feet aft of the right forward door, allowing sufficient space for galley servicing and the side load cargo operation in this area. Controls for opening the door are located so as to be easily operated from ground level. The container compartment uses an electrically powered system with an exterior and interior control panel to load and position either LD3 or LD4 type containers. Six of these containers can be accommodated in this compartment. The rear container compartment is slightly smaller and holds five of either type container. Both the exterior and interior control panels are basically the same as those at the forward compartment. The rear container compartment door can also be opened electrically from ground level. We must move to the left side of the airplane to see the bulk compartment. Access to this compartment was placed in this location to ease the traffic congestion at the right rear of the aircraft. The bulk compartment door is manually operated. All lavatories on the 767 are serviced at a central point located in this area, well out of the way of the servicing operations. The 767's two main fuel tanks and the auxiliary tank are serviced from the left wing. The fuel system includes several completely new features, including digital processors, densitometers, and digital displays, all of which simplify the fuel servicing operation. Let's go upstairs. Passengers will board and deplane through the forward left door. A quick glance tells us that the 767's door is quite different from other Boeing aircraft doors. Unlike the familiar swing type, this door lifts upward into the fuselage, 
in much the same manner as the passenger door on an L1011. The procedure for opening the door manually is very simple. First, push in the lever marked press. This releases the door handle and disarms the escape slide. The door lever is then pulled out and upward to unlatch the door itself. A counterbalance system allows the door to be lifted upward into the ceiling with a moderate effort. As the door disappears into the ceiling, it is locked into place. The door is closed by pushing on the release button while holding the door, then allowing the door to slowly move all the way down. The latch handle is then restowed, locking the door into place. This door may also be opened and closed electrically. The control is located under the latch handle. The switch is held in the up position until the door is completely stored in the ceiling, then released. When closing the door, the switch is held until the door is all the way down. The latch handle is then stowed, locking the door in place. Our first stop inside is the forward galley complex, which serves the 18 first-class passengers. Galley A provides storage space for three carts and one aisle cart below counter level. The upper area contains three ovens, a bun warmer, and supply storage areas. Galley B accommodates two carts and two waste bins in the lower area. Two coffee makers and two chiller storage spaces are located in the upper area. All galleys on the 767 are equipped with a cart chiller system similar to the 747 SP. The first class cabin contains three rows of six sleeper seats, numbered in the same manner as other wide body aircraft. These seats are all new in design and will be installed in the aircraft at MCI prior to the start of service. Although much lighter in design, the seats provide a high level of comfort. Overhead storage bins are located over both the center and side seats. The B zone ambassador class section contains 46 seats, six per row. This zone is served by mid cabin galley C. While not a complete galley, this unit is equipped with two coffee makers, storage space for three carts, and various storage areas. C zone contains 129 seats, seven per row. You've probably noticed that six of the seven seats in each row are either window or aisle, leaving only one so-called undesirable seat per row. The aft galley complex is made up of galleys D, E, F, and the aux galley. Galleys D, E, and F form a horseshoe at the extreme end of the cabin. Galley D holds three carts. The upper area has two chiller storage compartments and one coffee maker. Galley E can accommodate six carts. Waste containers are also located in the corners at either end. Five large 24 meal ovens and various storage areas are in the upper section. Galley F is equipped with three cart storage spaces. Two large ovens are located in this galley. The aux galley is located just forward and opposite galley E. Storage space is provided for one cart at either end. There are two coffee makers in the upper section. The 767 has one lavatory forward, two in mid plane, and two aft. The left aft lavatory is designated and equipped as the handicap lavatory. Additional rails and handholds are provided and the door may be latched in the open position for easier access. Curtains may also be positioned around the entrance area when needed for additional privacy. All lavatories feature attractive modern design. There are two aisle seats in the coach cabin which have been modified to afford easier accommodation to the handicapped passenger. These seats are equipped with movable outer armrests, which are held in the up position while the passenger is assisted into and out of the seat. The 767 is designed so as to utilize storage space efficiently. In addition to the roomy overhead bins, there is a mid-cabin garment bag closet. 
three coat closets serve as forward bulkheads and provide additional storage space. In these times of tight money and vanishing profits, the general rule in most companies is, if it won't generate revenue or result in a savings, don't buy it. The 767 fits well within this rule. It promises to do both. The cockpit design, instrumentation, and systems allow operation of the airplane by a two-person crew. The advanced engines provide more power, burn less fuel, and are quieter than any previous engine. The operating capabilities of the airplane make it ideal for both medium and long haul operations. The 767 arrives just in time to replace some of our older, less efficient airplanes. I'm sure you'll agree, the 767 is a most welcome addition to the fleet.